Thank you. Council, I'm sure we're lacking one uh, for quorum based on committee membership. Yes, we are. That's what I'm saying. Um, I, do, I don't see Manager Zuniga and I don't see Manager Valadez. That's correct. So we need to wait a minute or two. There's manager Valadez. Yeah. Good quorum. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. And I think we'll be expecting uh, manager Zuniga shortly. So um, do we need to wait for manager Zuniga? Entirely up to you. You can begin if you like because you do have a quorum. Okay. Anybody have any idea? I think um, we should Running. go ahead and begin. Because okay. She will be running a little bit late, but she didn't okay. tell us. Okay, thank you for that update. Can somebody just check to see if she's on her way? You know what I mean? She is. We've checked. She's okay. here. Oh, there she is. Oh, thank you, Manager Zuniga. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Good well, evening. <laughs> Today is June 3rd, 2021, and it is 5.03. As a quorum of the committee is in attendance, the our video conference. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Central Health Executive Committee. The first item of business is public communication. Uh, Yvonne, do we have anyone who wants to speak at public communication before our executive committee meeting? No, Madam Chair. No one signed up for the executive committee meeting. Okay, then we will move on to our agenda for the executive committee meeting. Item one, approve the minutes of the Central Health Board of Managers Executive Committee meeting, May 26, 2021. Is there a motion? I move that the committee approve the minutes of the Central Health Board of Managers Executive Committee meeting, May 26, 2021. A motion by Manager Bell, Manager Valadez. I see a second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Any abstaining? Same sign. Okay, thank you, members. That passes. Um, we'll now move on to item number two. Discuss and take appropriate action on the nomination of Betty Delarge. Did I pronounce that correctly? Delarge. Delarge. Okay, of Betty Delarge to an appointment on the board of directors of Sendero Health Plans, Inc. Uh, take it away, Manager Bell. Oh. Thank you. I see Manager Valadez has a question. Yes, Manager Valadez. If, would you, two questions? She wants to make a second. I think she's asking you to make oh, a Oh, you just want the motion <laughs> to go up and go ahead. Okay, well, okay. Um, I, I, I think that some of the members deserve a little explanation. <laughs> so, um, we had a resi uh, resignation from um, Director Lynn Hudson. Um, Lynn has been on the board for a very, very, very long time, uh, prior to even my terms on the board. Um, and to replace her uh, position, um, it was uh, told to me that um, Betty DeLarge was um, interested in uh, serving on the Sendero board. Um, Betty brings a lot of experience with her with regard to legal and regulatory, but first and foremost, Betty was the contract counsel for Sendero uh, for a long while. And so she is extremely um, 
knowledgeable about Sendero um, and has been with us through um, thick and thin, so to speak. So um, with her um, wanting to serve, um, I thought that would be an excellent fit for the board. And um, I am asking that the board um, place this on the consent agenda for the board meeting. Um, and I am open to any questions or concerns for the board members. Oh, by the way, she will be filling um, Lynn Hudson's term. Lynn Hudson's term is not over until 2022, October of 2022. So she will be filling uh, Lynn Hudson's term. Any questions, members? Do I have a motion, Manager Valadez? Oh, yes, I, I move that we uh, approve, recommend and approve this, uh, her appointment to the Sendero Board. But I have one question. Okay. Is And this may be a procedural question or a process question. Do we need to um, change our policy or our language eat with Cent Central Health and Sendero and maybe any of the other entities uh, that are that, that we responsible for to allow for uh, when a person is has resigned to allow the replacement to take uh, their place immediately. And I, you know, I know Lynn uh, was, yeah. uh, you know, who I have a great respect for and follow her on her vision of, of Sendero ultimately being the I don't, healthcare yeah, provider. Andrew Valdez, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, David Duncan, I see you on the line. Is there anything that we need to do there? I don't know that there is. No, as soon as the appointment is made by the board, she, she so takes the chair. Let's proceed. Manager, okay. do you have a motion? I move that we uh, uh, approve and and adopt uh, uh, Betty DeLarge as the- uh, uh, Manager Jones, you had a question, sorry. Well, I have a, uh, let me finish my motion. As yeah. a replacement to the Sendero board for Lynn Hudson, thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Manager Jones. Okay, I just, just a procedural. So are we in our, this is the executive committee meeting? We're yeah. Yes, we're recommending this to okay. the board and it'll be on the, cons it's listed on the consent agenda for our board meeting. Right, but it will come to the board for discussion though, will it not before? Not, well, not we on consent. Unless you pull it. I'm not, not unless you pull it. It is on consent. Well, I think that opportunity will be allowed to, to pull and discuss. I don't know her. I have no objections to her, but I'd like to, I, I just heard what, Manager Bell said, but manager, well, then why don't we allow Manager Bell? I mean, we can discuss right now. That I think that would be well, the, that would be fine because I'm not an executive board member, executive committee member. So I was wondering if I could get more yes. information at this time. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Manager Bell, could you provide more information? And Manager Jones, why don't you just ask your questions directly yeah. to Manager Bell? Hey. Manager Jones, ask, ask me what you need to know. Yeah, well, just briefly, a little bit about her. I don't know. I don't know her. I'm, I hate to say, but uh, her resume is attached, so um, it is um, part of the uh, backup for your agenda. And um, I can pull it up if you would like and uh, go over it. Um, no, 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 I don't need you to do that. Have you just, I mean, you talked a little bit about her. Her back, background is anything. Her connection with central health or with the community. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Um, you know, Betty has worked um, mainly with uh, insurance and insurance companies um, for most of her career. Um, she is a health regulatory uh, attorney, so she has a relationship with TDI, Texas Department of Insurance, and has argued many cases. Um, where there have been conflicts between the company and the regulatory uh, industry. Um, I'm not remembering from her resume any of her community service, if she has documented any of that there. Um, she has been involved with a number of entities in the community. I'm not sure that they were um, as directly connected to central health as Sendero was. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks very much. That, that's that's helpful. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So there was a. Uh, you have Manager Valadez has her hand up. Um, Manager Valadez. Yeah. Yes, I just wanted to quickly state that that one of the things that she did was make a commitment to our 
our uh, Sendero population and to Central Health when she acted as a consultant uh, in, in assisting Wes and uh, Sendero in navigating the difficult years that they have had right. to navigate. So Thank you, Major Valdez. Major Valdez had a motion. Was there a second? I second it. There was a second. Okay, Major Bell. Any more discussion? If not, we'll proceed to voting. I'm not seeing any more discussion. So all in favor, say, saying aye, aye, aye. Opposed, same sign. Abstaining, any abstaining? Okay, thank you members, the motion passes. Uh, we will now move to item number three, review and take appropriate action on the prioritization and tentative scheduling of items for consideration of future Central Hall board and committee meetings. And I have a few things that I wanted to start off with members. Um, and do keep in mind, we have a long agenda ahead of us. So just be cognizant of that. Um, as we move through this, this executive committee. Uh, Manager uh, Validus had asked um, in our last uh, board meeting and also in the questions that she submitted, and thank you, Manager Validus, for that. Really appreciate that. Very helpful to everyone. About having a public hearing um, before, the, um, before we have a, uh, the final vote on the issuance of the certificates of obligation. Now, the, um, I have talked to legal staff who is here and he has consulted with others who are experts in this area as far as attorneys. And there is no public hearing requirement. So there is no actual public hearing that we can have on this. It's just, it's just not there. So the options are either to just you know, it, highlight it and people can speak in public um, 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 participation, public communication, either for strategic planning or our board meeting or both. Um, or if the board wanted to do something in addition to public participation that would have to take the form of just having um, an input session that the board would post because there is no, and that, and we would have, you know, time limits, everything on it, like a public hearing, but there is no public hearing that exists for this. So what do, I'm going to open this to discussion to see what members want to do. Anybody? Manager Valdez? Yes, just for clarification purposes, um, uh, I, I, I didn't ever quite hear the justification for not having to at least being allowed to say, if it's not necessarily gonna be a, a public hearing, we can have a public hearing for the sale of certificates of obligation for the Eastern Crescent clinics, but it's not necessary for anything else. I just wanted clarification on that. It's not a public hearing for any of this. There is no public hearing in and in statute for sale of COs, whether it's for the Eastern Crescent or Hancock or anything past or future. It that was my, that was my point. Uh, Madam Chair. So what we can do is have a public input session. That's okay. fine. And we, we yeah. so long as so long as the language is consistent. And if we're going to do it for in the future, if we're going to do it for the sale of uh, certificates of obligation for Eastern Crescent projects, then we're going to include all of them, uh, every, all our projects, not just specifically two for uh, the Eastern Crescent. Well, the ones that are on the CI. A, a public input. Okay, let's, let's, let's be clear here. The, the certificates for obligation are being sold for Hancock. We have some COs for Hancock and we have for the Hancock building purchase and we have some COs for the Eastern Crescent. They will both be bid and closed you know, at the same time. The question before members of the board who are here and present is, do you, you know, what is your preference? Do you want to have a separate input session? Because that's what we, you know, call it. There is no public hearing for this in anywhere in statute. An input session, right, that would be separate from strategic planning and separate from the board meeting. Um, so that's one way to handle it, to have an input session and people could have their allotted minutes at, similar to a public hearing, but it would be an input session. Or do you just want people to come to public, you know, communication? That's, those, those seem to be our, our the, the decision point here. Members? Manager Valadez. Yes. So my, my suggestion is that we make it a public input session. Okay. Uh, very simple. Okay. Um, so any other members have 
you know, comments they want to make on this? What do you want to do? Any further comment? Yes, um, Manager Matwani. I uh, am curious, I would like to know uh, from presumably staff, uh, what it would, what it, what effort is required for that? Um, get an idea of exactly what our goals are and find out what the daylight is, you know, uh, uh, what the daylight is between being able to do that in, in citizen communication versus the public input session uh, and then see what it, you know, see what it takes to, to, to close that gap. My preference is, is going to be to balance what I think is a very valid, uh, uh, priority on, on, uh, that I'm hearing from manager validists to get public input with, uh, minimizing, uh, optimizing, optimizing staff effort. And so if, if we can accomplish those goals in citizen communication, I might yes, and I have. And, and I have discussed this with, um, with Mike Giesel before the meeting and he's prepared to address that, Mike. Yes, thank you. And I'll, I'll start off and uh, David and Perla, if you all uh, have other things that you need to add, please, please interrupt and do so. Um, so the, the, the question is what all is involved. What we would do is we would look at August 4th, which is a, a plan date for a strategic planning committee meeting and then we would tack on the public input session along that date. So it's, you know, we're, all, we're already going to be in, in, in meeting mode. And so it's just the essentially getting the necessary right. agenda item properly posted. Yes, when you say tack on, it's not being tacked on to strategic planning committee meeting. What we would have is a separate special correct, yes. input meeting prior to strategic planning, right? Yes, thank you for the specificity, appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, so we would, we would take that approach and that would be in addition to uh, any public comment that is also offered on the special call meeting on August 9th, as well as any public comment that is also offered at Travis County Commissioner's Court because this, um, the sale of the CEOs also has to go back to Travis County. On August 10th, correct? Uh, I believe that's correct, yes. Yes, that is. Okay, did that answer your question, Manager Motwani? Yeah, then I would, I, would just, I would comment that with those three opportunities, then uh, it seems, A, it optimizes sort of effort as much as possible by having it back to back with another meeting. Uh, B, yeah, the onus, I think, uh, comes to us as managers to make sure that we do everything we can to get everyone who is interested in sharing public comment out at those, uh, at those you know, at those opportunities. Okay. Um, any other comments before we move on? Please, uh, if I don't see your hand, just shout out, okay? <laughs> I'm looking at the little squares. Yes, Manager Bell. Um, I agree with Manager Matwani. Um, I think that um, at least having those series of uh, public hearings or public input um, definitely gives the public in a very defined way, yeah. a way to provide us uh, some input. Um, okay. And I just wanna say that having it not as a part of strategic planning is a good thing because right. not all of the board members are members of strategic planning. And so this is an input to the board. And so um, I think the expectation is that the board members are there to listen and to take in <clears throat> any comments uh, that may be made at the public input session. Thank you. And I certainly concur with, uh, with both your comments and those of Manager Motwani. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Anything else? If not, then, then you know, staff will proceed accordingly, correct? Uh, I'm looking for Mike Gieslin. Yes? Okay. Um, another um, um, item um, that, uh, again, Manager Valdez, thank you for um, um, sending um, your questions, very helpful. In writing. <laughs> In writing, yeah. No, it's very helpful uh, for, for all of us and for staff too. Um, some very good questions and an ability to do some research and discuss in advance. Thank you for that. Um, the Hancock, um, you had a question regarding the um, purchase of what we're calling the Hancock building, right? In Hancock Center, the old Sears building. And that to be conservative in our um, numbers that um, 
our finance staff worked on so diligently, they did not include the sale of our current building because they wanted we, you know, the most conservative scenario, right? And you had asked about including that. Um, Mike Giesland, do you want to address that too? Yeah, so as it relates to a future agenda item for uh, an upcoming meeting, this is something that, and, and let me just make sure that we're all on the same page, what we're talking about is looking at the disposition of this building, the Cesar Chavez building where we are now, and taking the proceeds from that disposition and plugging those into the financial calculations for the administrative office consolidation as an offset. So that's that's what we're all referencing here. Okay, with that, yes, it, is. Um, it is it would be, and again, as um, Chair Greenberg pointed out, the it's it was a fairly a conservative approach, and so the agenda item would need would would be premature if we were to talk about it uh, within the next couple of months, um, only because. We would need to go get evaluation. The evaluation would be stale by the time we actually get around to um, the construction of the administrative consolidated offices, probably two to three years out. Now, at the same time, again, as a future agenda item, when we do bring back more refined project budgets, first of all, the transaction has to happen. It hasn't happened yet, um, but, but assuming that it does, then uh, as we bring back modified budgets again as a as a future agenda item, uh, future meetings, we can we can start plugging in some some guesstimates, but that's that's what they'll be when you're literally two to three years out from actually being able to do a final reconciliation of what the ultimate financial um, and fiscal picture is for an office consolidation. Yes, that that would be you know when we do capital improvement plans and you look out beyond a year or two, it's it's just a plan. When you get closer, you can do the actual capital budget. But but that would be helpful. Thank you, Mike. All right, anything else on that item? If not, I'll move on because I know staff had some things I wanted to discuss under this to another one that um, that we had. Um, discussed um, at our last board meeting and that um, that uh, Mike Giesel and I have been discussing as, as well as with David Duncan, our legal counsel, and that is um, future board meetings and, and how we will be meeting. <laughs> Virtual, in-person, hybrid. First of all, some of that depends, of course, on the governor and continuing or not continuing any um, emergency orders, right, David? Yes, ma'am. The, the ability to have fully virtual meetings like right. this arises from the governor's disaster declaration, which That's is right. monthly. If he ever doesn't renew it, and it generally renews around the fourth or fifth of each month, right? Watch very carefully for that. If he renews it, then the the uh, declaration that allows us to have these meetings continues. If he doesn't, that will right. go away. And if we want to have a meeting, we'll have to have it in person. So right. we are looking at that and planning for that, but uh, none of the bills that would have allowed this to continue, there were several bills yeah. that would have yeah. uh, allowed this to continue yeah. as a matter of course, and none of those passed. Right, none of those passed. So next week we'll know more about the, whether the governor renews the disaster declaration, right? And we'll know more next week. Assuming the governor does renew the disaster declaration, then um, what I would ask staff to do is look at this, we would continue in August to hold virtual meetings and get a report in August from staff regarding how we should proceed. We have some challenges with our board meeting room. You know, we don't, we don't have the type of room that city council has or the county commissioners, where there's a dais, where there's all kinds of city seating for people. We're, we're in very close quarters, right? And so, you know, we need to look at that and um, my recommendation would be that going forward, we always allow for virtual um, public communication because that assists people who can't come in person, right? And I've, I've been a proponent of that for, for many years in many venues. So, um, but we have the challenges of our room, which maybe someday with the Hancock could be remedied by having a, a more hospitable room for the public to come and, and participate with us at our meetings um, as some other entities have. Then um, um, there is also, as I said, the you know would meetings be hybrid? Although the legislation did not pass, we do have the ability, as long as we have a quorum, for members beyond a quorum to participate virtually, right? So we do have that, and we have the ability for the public to participate 
virtually. Um, you know, there's a Delta variant. We know there's some issues out there. And then of course, open meetings. So if the governor does not renew the disaster declaration, then we would, uh, then um, a quorum of the board would be meeting in person. We could have other members meet virtually. We could have um, public participation continue to be completely virtual. That is allowed. Um, if he, if the governor does renew the disaster declaration, then um, we will meet virtually in August and have staff come back in August with recommendations about how to move forward in September and beyond. Okay, members? Does that work for you all? Any questions? So stay tuned next week. All right, thank you. Uh, Manager Valdez, do you have a question? Not on this particular okay. question. One more, but on the scheduling of meetings. We're going to move to that next. Oh, okay. Okay. Perla is. Oh, oh Manager oh, Jones. Oh, yes. Yeah. Just a quick question. So, if he, if he does not renew it, and we have to, and we meet in person, and we don't have a quorum of those there, but we have a quorum with one away from there. No, that doesn't work. Doesn't if he work. does not renew it, we have to have a quorum of the board physically in the room. Okay, that's what I was trying to get at. All right, yes. thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay, then, per, uh, Manager Valdez. Just real quickly, again, I, I'd like for staff to maybe uh, enlighten us at some point in time, even a quick blurb uh, through the internet or through an email as to, uh, or, or Sherry, uh, possible, well, well, I'll speak to it when we get to the next item. Uh, okay, let's do that, please. Yeah. Thank you, Manager Valdez. Um, Perla, do you want to move us on to the other, um, portion of this item? Yes, I wanted Thank to you. quickly review the tentative um, schedules for August and September, unless Mike, you wanted, was there anything else you needed to Yeah, discuss? Mike, did you wanna add anything before we get to that? Mike? You're on mute. When Mike, we get through uh, September, I'll come back and talk about contract reporting. Okay. okay. It relates to both meetings, agendas. Thank you, Mike. All right, so we'll come back to that, Perla. Okay. I'm going to share, uh, do you see the August and September tentative schedules? Yes, I do, Perla, thank you. All right, so as you know, there's no meetings in July and I'm just gonna quickly go through this, but um, I want to make you aware that August and September will be two busy months. We have three uh, board meetings scheduled um, where a quorum is necessary of the full board and that tentative uh, special called board meeting on August 9th to, to approve the uh, sale of their certificates of obligation. Um, a board of managers meeting on August 11th where you will review the latest draft of the budget that staff will work on through the month of July. Uh, we'll also bring back a, the systems planning vendor contract for your approval. Um, in August, at the uh, late August, August 25th, you will be um, again receiving another presentation on the, the latest budget draft and you will be voting on the maximum tax rate and setting a public hearing um, for the budget and tax rate. And um, I ha have here a couple of other items. I'm not gonna review them all. Um, going down to subcommittees, um, we discussed having a um, Eastern Travis County yes. subcommittee meeting and, um, and I spoke to manager Jones about that um, as well. We have a couple of updates to give, but it should be brief. And then strategic planning, um, this is August 4th. So it's before you see the draft of the budget again um, on August um, 11th. Uh, but we're, we're going to be going through proposed budget priorities. So I expect that it will be a lengthy meeting um, to review those uh, strategic proposed strategic priorities and also to discuss network adequacy, including um, service um, network adequacy and service planning. Including right. Members, do you have any questions on this? I think we've got it in front of us. If there are no questions, Perla, why don't we just move on? That's, that's great. And so just what I'm hearing is that we're also going to be adding a special called meeting. We are on August 4th. On August 4th. Correct. That's the public input. 
that we talked about. Okay, next. There's a question, Manager Valadez. Manager Valadez, yes. Do you want me to hold it until September? We got through September? Yes, please, that would be great. Thank you. And so, you know, September quickly, um, we'll have a public hearing on September right. 2nd. We'll have a board of managers meeting on September 9th, which um, this will be the meeting where you vote on the budget and the tax rate. Right. And then, um, and then we have strategic planning committee. And okay. I don't know, I think we were going to be um, alternating Eastern Crescent subcommittee. So we will not be having Eastern Crescent subcommittee on, on this month. Okay, Manager Valdez, you had a question? Yes, on, um, I, I guess it's uh, in the August meeting under other items, number mm -hmm. two, our policy on policies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, my, my question is as a, the bylaws chair and policies, uh, I'd like to know if I could call a meeting, uh, maybe not immediately, but pretty soon mm -hmm. uh, with respect to reviewing some of our policies to, I guess, lessen the load uh, for uh, sure. miscommunication, misunderstandings and clarification of what we have on the books and if there are any changes that we need to make in order to make sure that, that we're pretty transparent and open in how we're conducting uh, uh, business yeah. and, and making sure that our policies are, are very clear. Okay. Why don't I'd you, like to have permission if y'all need to discuss that to do that. Why don't you coordinate that with uh, with Perla, Manager Thank Valdez. you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Right. And this item uh, will be presented by um, McKinsey Frazier, our, uh, our uh, Vice President of Compliance, and also um, I think Mike Gieslin. And I think it's to level set um, you know, what are the board responsibilities around um, uh, policies, policies, setting policies. Right. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Um, all right. I'm not seeing any hands. Shout out if I don't see you. Mike uh, Gieslin, I think you had something now. Yes, thank you. So, as, and this is going to be. Uh, both standing agenda items as well as perhaps uh, ad hoc agenda items. But I just, this, and again, this, what I'm telling you is just for awareness purposes only. But this uh, goes back to reporting on contracts. And so, as you know, you will continue to get uh, monthly changes in new contracts, which gives a little bit more explanation uh, as to the nature of, of what it is. And also, if there is a not to exceed, for example, or, or a dollar amount associated with that contract, what that is. So, we'll continue to do that. Um, that's not going to be an agenda item as much as it is a disclosure. So the agenda item pieces though, um, will be when we get to a point where let's say sometime after the, the close of the fiscal year, um, to be decided, uh, in terms of the timing of that, but coming back and reporting on, okay, here's the total amounts that were spent on various contracts. Um, and then the other agenda item would be on an ad hoc basis. Uh, where if there are serious compliance issues with particular contracts, we'll bring that back to the board, uh, probably under some type of standing agenda item. Now, the issue about, and again, speaking to what becomes an agenda item for the board's attention on compliance issues with particular contracts, we're going to have to work through on trial and error basis some thresholds. So for instance, if we have a porter contract and the, the porter does not come by the offices here on Tuesday, like they were scheduled to, and this is a hypothetical, and instead they come by on a Friday, technically is that contract um, in non-compliance? Technically speaking, yes. But is that the sort of thing that we bring to the board? Now, if there is a service level and it's affecting our patients and it is not uh, resolved and we have to start noticing, then yes, that's the sort of thing that we would bring back to the board. So we'll have to, again, work through trial and error as to what ultimately becomes an agenda item. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions? Thank you. All right, if there are no questions. I'm sorry. Hello? Very quickly, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, 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 only because I just want clarification, Mike, if you can tell us, and I don't know if Jonathan's on. Uh, it, let's say we have uh, an issue with a, a service delivery provider. You know, one of the specialists um, hasn't gotten to some of his uh, patients that have been recommended from 
uh, community care or something, and it causes a harm to that patient. Is that, uh, and you know, uh, is that something that would be considered by Central Health for to bring forward to us or not? I'm just curious. Okay, is, do we have a response to that? Yes, Jonathan Morgan, thank you. Good evening, uh, Manager Valdez, uh, great question. Um, typically, um, a, a quality issue or an outcomes issue related to a patient would be reviewed in the medical executive board setting. There's a, a credentialing and quality assurance and peer review function of that medical executive board that we've been standing up this year. And that's the, that's the primary place where, um, where, where that would be reviewed. Um, something that, that the medical executive board does plan to report out as we get more of these processes stood up is newly, newly credentialed providers. And we could also um, provide reports on, on providers whose credentials were either suspended or terminated. So Thank I you. think we have mechanisms to report on that to you. I agree. And that sounds like the appropriate place. Anything else, members? Not seeing anything. Just, just for clarification purposes, Jonathan. Um, so yes, that those are the issues that come before the medical review board, but when they result in, let's say, uh, a, 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 a hardship on a patient or even death, uh, will we be notified of that? And I think that when we had this discussion, I, I was concerned about uh, how were we going to interact with the medical uh, board uh, if we don't know about things like this. Okay, Thank Jonathan, you. Morgan. Yes, ma'am. So we're, we're still developing those processes, Manager Valadez, okay. and I think more of that information will be forthcoming. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of that process development, but we'll keep your comments in mind and hopefully bring Thank something you. back that addresses that. I appreciate it. Good questions, Manager Valadez, and I know Jonathan that this is all brand new and being developed. So appreciate your updates when you uh, have them as you develop all of these processes. All right, members, anything else? Not seeing anything, then our next Central Health Executive Committee meeting is tentatively scheduled for Wednesday, August 25th, 2021 at 5 p.m. at the Central Health Administrative Offices, 1111 East Cesar Chavez Street, Austin, Texas, 78702, and or remotely by video conference, depending on the status of the governor's disaster declaration and stay at home orders. At this time, I'm ready to accept a motion for adjournment. I see a motion by Manager Valadez, yes? and a second by Manager Bell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Same sign, opposed. Any abstaining? Thank you, managers. Do we stay on here this same? Okay, so we're gonna give 60 seconds for transition members and then we will move to our regular agenda.